Hello everyone and a very good morning to you. This is Rachel live from Kalkine Studios and you're watching the opening bell. Now the US Fed's prediction on hiking interest rates sooner than expected has weakened the market sentiments. Meanwhile, the change in the central bank's stance appears to contradict its claims that the ongoing rise in inflation is transitory in nature. On the other hand, the Reserve Bank of Australia has been an odd one out in embracing the hawkish tone as other developed country central banks. It is to be seen if the central bank will retain its belief of waiting to raise interest rates when the labour market is tight enough to drive inflation and wages sustainably higher, or improving macro fundamentals will prompt the policymakers to change their stance. On that note, let us now cast an eye over how market chart is panning out today. The ASX 200 is sharply lower today, dropping over 1.5% to 7,252.5 during our trading hours. The bottom performing stocks in this index are Coden and Virgin Money UK. Australian shares are poised to trade lower after taking cues from US stocks that languished on Friday after a Federal Reserve official predicted interest rates would rise in 2022. Gold miners, Silver Lake Resources and Persis Mining also traded in the red. Notably on Friday, gold struggled to recover and ended the session in the red for the sixth straight session. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia also edged lower on signing an agreement to sell its insurance business to the Hollard Group. Meanwhile, Building Products and Construction Materials Group Borrell traded up. That was on North American Building Products business sale. Meanwhile, all three main indices on Wall Street closed in the red on Friday with market participants wary of a more hawkish stance from the U.S. Fed, while the U.S. dollar climbed higher, posting its biggest gain in over a year. The Dow Jones fell by a decent 1.6% on Friday, marking the worst week for the blue chip index since January 2021. The S&P 500 lost 1.31%, while the Nasdaq Composite shed 0.92%. The U.S. equity started trending downward after the Wednesday policy update from the U.S. Fed. However, on Friday, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard's statement that the Fed could raise rates as soon as next year worked as a catalyst and further fueled the downward trend. These comments are somewhat negated on the same day by Minneapolis Federal Reserve President Neil Kashkari's statement, who said he didn't see interest rates going up until 2024. Despite all the panic looming around the interest rate hike, the Fed also made it clear that it planned to keep up the monetary support until the jobs market comes back to the pre-pandemic level. But the prospect of sooner than expected interest rate hikes helped nudge investors away from the stock market that surged to near record highs at the start of last week. On the other hand, the U.S. Fed stance propelled the U.S. dollar as the dollar index surged 0.43 percent on Friday to 92.3, its highest level since mid-April 2020. The dollar index registered its strongest weekly gain in almost 14 months as investors are fleeing away from equities and seeking some safety in the U.S. dollar compared to other currencies. Meanwhile, the Australian and the New Zealand dollars traded close to their 2021 20, lows on Friday as the risk of preemptive rate hikes from the U.S. Fed threatened the global reflation trade, helping their U.S. counterpart. And now on that note, it's time for a very quick break. I'll be back very soon. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. Welcome back. This is Rachel live from Calkine Studios and you're watching The Opening Bell. Moving on to our next segment now, let us zoom our lens on the Australian share market for the day. Let's look at the energy sector first. Australian energy players such as Woodside Petroleum, Oil Search, Beach Resources and Origin Energy are currently all trading in the red. 
On Friday, crude oil shook off earlier losses and rebounded from lower levels following reports that OPEC expected limited U.S. oil output growth this year. Brent crude futures rose 0.6% to settle at $73.50 per barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude was up 0.8% to $71.64 U.S. cents per barrel. Both benchmarks closed the week for about a 1.1% gain. Let's move on now to the miner space. Heavyweight miners, the BHP Group, Rio Tinto, Tinto and Fortescue Metals are currently trading in the red. On Friday, the most actively traded iron ore futures contract for September month delivery closed the session with an uptick of 1.99% to 1,229 yuan. Meanwhile, copper on Friday closed the week with its biggest fall since March 2020 after China said it would sell state reserves to limit prices. The U.S. Fed's signal to tighten its monetary policy also helped copper tumble to lower levels. On that note, ASX-listed copper players Oz Minerals and Sunfire Resources traded in the red during early trading hours this morning. In the yellow metal space, Australian gold miners such as DeGray Mining, Evolution Mining, Romelius Resources and Northern Star Resources are inching lower today. Looking at the commodity price scenario, on Friday gold struggled to recover and ended the session in the red for the sixth straight session. The yellow metal closed the week with a sizable loss of 5.7%, making it its worst week in over a year. The U.S. dollar's extended rally on the back of the U.S. Fed's hawkish outlook impacted gold's demand. With that, we'll take a very quick break. I'll be back very soon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome back. This is Rachel live from Calgine Studios and you're watching the opening bell. Moving on, let us now look at the major newsmakers in the Australian share market today. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia shares dipped on signing an agreement to sell Cominsured General Insurance to the Hollard Group. The bank's announcement reads that this will be an exclusive 15-year strategic alliance with Hollard for the distribution of home and motor vehicle insurance products to CBA's retail customers across Australia. The deal includes a $625 million of upfront consideration together with deferred payments and additional investment from Hollard. Also, Hollard will be making additional investment throughout the 15-year strategic alliance to drive innovation and enhance the customer experience. Meanwhile, Building Products and Construction Materials Group Borrell traded up on North American Building Products Business Sale. The company has announced an agreement with its subsidiary of Westlake Chemical Corporation to sell its North American Building Products Business for 2.15 billion US dollars. Moving on now, the Bank of Queensland, their shares slipped on receiving ME Bank's acquisition approval. The treasurer of the Commonwealth Bank of Aust the treasurer of the Commonwealth of Australia approved Bank of Queensland's acquisition of the ME Bank, the only condition president to the completion of the transaction. The Bank of Queensland has entered into an agreement to acquire 100% of the issued share capital in ME Bank for a cash consideration of $1.325 billion payable at completion. Shares of drug developer Star Pharma fell as the company stopped the sales of its nasal antiviral spray in the UK. 
According to the company, I got correspondence from Britain Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency regarding specific promotional claims made for the company's Viralese antiviral nasal spray. The correspondence relates to the interrelationship between its product claims and references to SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 and its categorization as well. Star Pharma on Friday confirmed SPL7013, the active in the company's antiviral nasal spray Viralese, has potent virucidal activity against the alpha, beta and gamma variant strains of the COVID-19 virus. Although the company says it disagrees with MHRA's position, Star Pharma and Lloyd's Pharmacy have agreed to temporarily pause the sales of Viralese in the UK. Moving on, Silk Laser Australia, their shares soared on completing a fully underwritten placement to sophisticated and institutional investors to raise $20 million. Silk Laser Australia operates specialty clinics offering a range of non-surgical aesthetic products and services. The company offers laser hair removal, cosmetic injectables, skin treatments, body contouring and fat reduction services along with other related services. Moving on, Trust Power, in which Infratil is a 51% shareholder, announced the sale of its gas, telecommunications and retail electricity supply business to Mercury New Zealand. That's all from me for now. We'll be back with more stock updates in our upcoming shows. Stay tuned for more live updates on Calkine TV across the economy, markets and sectors. I'm Rachel, signing off for now.